Happy Friday, Happy Friday, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Total Traffic and Conversion Show. And I'm here with Betty Withrow and Roy Dickan and our special guest, Maria Guevara. And Betty, would you introduce your guest here? It's my it's pleasure to introduce Maria, Greg. I just literally just met Maria yesterday. Uh, we were connected on LinkedIn uh, a few days earlier. And she immediately said, I think we have a lot of shared values. And I was like, I think so too. So we had a wonderful conversation and I said, we got to get to know you better. Uh, Maria has a ton of experience in many different fields. And so I'm going to turn it over to her to describe who she is, what she does and how she does it, and where she learned to do it and all that good stuff. Oh, fantastic. Thank you. Thank you for having me today. So, um, it's like Betty were telling me, okay, so how do I describe myself, right? Okay, I'm a marketer, um, I'm an entrepreneur, um, I'm a consultant, I'm a coach, I'm an educator, and I'm a speaker. Bottom line, what I'm passionate about is basically helping leaders, business owners, elevate their thinking, elevate their brands, um, and also focus, elevating them by focusing on the core or essence of what they're about. Yes, I do have a wide breadth of you know experience. I've been in um, corporate um, advertising agencies. I also have like um, a finance background. I have licenses for insurance, you know, marketing, um, you know, variable uh, selling as well. I also did some income tax preparation too. The reason why I have all of that is because of my passion about entrepreneurship and how to build businesses. So in a nutshell, that's basically what I do. I want to help people, those who have businesses, small business owners or mid-sized business owners elevate their business and elevate their brand. That's perfect. Yeah. yeah. And uh, also you shared with me that it's part of your mission to overcome materialistic thinking and have people align with values that serve the world and serve our, our deeper purpose as human beings. Yeah. So yeah. I think that's one of the things and that- The core of it too, yes, going into the core. It's like expanding yourself by going within and then expanding further. So. Right, yes. Nice. Yeah. Values are so important today. More important than ever, I think. Yeah. More important, yes, I totally believe that because I actually knew the other day I was thinking about the word decency, right? The decency. Mm -hmm. And also Betty, we're talking about the being proper in terms of business. Yeah. So where is that now? I mean, if we go back to who we are as people, or what the essence is about us, it can also affect our business and also our brand. So it's from within to, you know, outside. So yes, values are very much important. Yeah, I think that what we really want to know is that we're making things better when yeah. we're doing business. Yeah. And uh, then when we do that and we find the people to be with who can align with that same vision and make things better then it makes everything better for us as well because we're all connected exactly actually you know what i mentioned this to you uh, yesterday too it's like businesses are built for people right we build businesses to serve people to satisfy their needs and their wants and people also build businesses so bottom line the essence of everything is all about people understanding what we need and how we can serve them well is actually how we can um, make our business, you know, uh, be uh, productive and prosperous is by right. service. Yeah, that's yeah. very true. I find that the best clients that I have are the ones that share the values that I have or I share their values. E either way, it works. Yeah, it's like the, the tribe thing, right? They said, you know, be in the tribe, be in the, you know, your community that have, yeah. you know, the same mindset, the same, you know, values. That's why I was so thrilled to meet Betty, you know. And can I just share this little story? Sure. So a few a few days ago, I met, uh, yeah, a few days ago, I was chit chatting with uh, a friend of mine and we're just trying to develop a story. And I said, okay, what are we going to name this lady that in our story? And I said, why don't we name it Betty? And after a few days, I met the real Betty. <laughs> Whoa, that's great. So it's like, again, the universe is trying to like match things up, you know, with people. And I was just so thrilled again. And I'm I'm, ha I'm happy to be here with you guys. <laughs> well, we're happy you're here too. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah. So tell, tell us more about what you're doing now, please, Maria. What are some projects you're working on? 
Um, one project I'm working on is um, I'm putting together uh, my book, you know, and uh, and also a program. And this is I call it core news, which is a strategy format. Um, what I'm trying to do is to put together uh, philosophy, you know, psychology, spirituality, and with marketing, with branding and operations and business development, all in one. So it's a compendium of things. It's like a mixture of MBA with, you know, strategic thinking, systems thinking and all in one. So I call it core news. Core stands for um, C, which would be for um, cognitive or cognition. And then O is for optimization, which a little bit about Six Sigma there, which is like process improvement and uh, maximizing use of assets. And R is for uh, relate, which is, you know, engagement in relationships with people. And elevate is actually, you know, uh, taking it our, ourselves step up, you know, to level up, which is part of spirituality and also, you know, um, um, transformation. So all of that in one of uh, the book that I'm putting together and also the modules that I'm putting together for that. So. Excellent. Terrific. Yeah. Yeah. Now, with with the varied skill set that you have, that gives you a number of different points of view to, in order to present that knowledge. So that's going to be really valuable for more than one type of community and business. That's really cool. Yeah, because the vision, as we said, is to have something we put together a business for mm -hmm. people, not just for profit, but actually to help people be better. Because yes. of service, as we said, as Roy was saying, is value that we bring. You know, if it doesn't uplift people, then if it's just money, then it's going to be short term. But if it does have an effect for the community and the people, then it's going to be long term. And the, and the impact of that is even bigger. You know, if I relate it to a branding, you know, when they say that a brand is just a brand, right? A product and a service is just a product and service. And it doesn't have a name, right? But we create a brand out of it. But if we make that brand bigger than what it is, then it would have a more... How do you say that attachment and engagement with a client? So it's bigger than what it is. It has more impact because it influences people to be better and to have this community. As what Roy was saying, it's like a tribe that you work with. So this this part of it, that's you know my my vision of what I'm doing. So yeah, yeah. I, I'd, I'd like to that. add to that that. Um, as a group here, what we like to do is collaborate because a lot of us were were only, um, you know, we're basically me, myself, and I, for, <laughs> for each one of us for many years. And um, when we started working together, it was so much more fun. But we could also create better solutions. Yeah. And so, um, you know, that's kind of what you're referring to. Uh, because our values are similar mm -hmm. and um, and we're developing an excellent relationship. But the the what we can offer to other people is what we've now been able to accomplish together and mm -hmm. what we can do, you know, for each new client that we get. We've been having a lot of fun with a couple of them lately that really we're trying to get started for years mm -hmm. and when uh, we got together with them, all of a sudden, you know, within a month or two, they're off to the races. So, but again, it's that it's the values, the similar values. It wouldn't work with somebody we didn't have similar values with. So we've got it with ourselves and then we have it with our clients. And I love that. It, it, it just works out so well. Yeah, because there's no resistance to it. Because if there's friction and resistance, then it won't work. It's just you're going to be push and pulling like that. Right. So, yeah, I yes. totally agree. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. 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 If I may say, because like, oh, I'm reading a book, actually, and it's fantastic. Um, it's, the book is Power Versus Force by Dr. Hawkins. And I'll just show it so you can see it, right? Power I can see it, yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's about the hidden determinants of human behavior. And uh, I read books like this because it kind of gives me an idea of how do we make decisions and how how our consciousness and unconsciousness affect how we make decisions and how we live our lives. And so uh, that has actually has an impact to how we live our lives and how we do business. So 
this is just amazing because the difference and just the two words of power and force and brand they said if the if a brand has power then it has already has influence so there's no push that you need to do it's more of like people because people want what they want and they will search for it so if the brand has power it already has influence and then if the force if you have the force there is you're pushing them there's more of like coercive or you know like pressure into that then people sometimes psychology would say no i don't want that because i'm being pushed but if there's influence there's already power within an eight in a brand because we discovered what the value is it already stands there so people gravitate to it because of the power it has so this book is about human behavior but we can apply it to branding and business so yeah. that's why i just shared it with you because i'm just uh you know i like to read books and this one is the book that i'm reading right now and uh just like to share it with you guys so oh fabulous thank you cool yeah I, I like that concept a lot when um, it, it's like pushing versus pulling, right? And when you you stand in your value, you know that you have a good uh, a good offer and that you your values are sincere. People feel that and they're drawn to you. Uh, and, you know, and as you say, if you try to and tell them, look, what I've got is really great. You're missing it, you know. And and I think we've all seen that kind of marketing of yeah, you know, you're 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 wrong if you don't buy from me. Right. Nobody wants to do that. <laughs> yeah. I don't know yeah. why people would think that works, but for a while, I think maybe about two years ago, that longer than that, I suppose, before the pandemic, there were a lot of people doing that. And it was just like yucky. You know? yeah, the two hardest, because people remember things because of high emotions. Yeah. Right? We remember our you know first love or whatever loss. It's just because of the impact of the, the emotional so two things the emotional uh, part of it emotions and also um well how they make decisions of that but then later on it's more logical so it's more it's be, it's functional and also emotional so people are driven to emotions so it's like yeah. emotion starts it all off yeah and and then logic may be what makes them actually take action but they're attracted mm -hmm. to the whole thing with the emotion yeah, but as Bed was saying about the fear factor, because two strongest emotion is fear and love. So that's why one of the things, okay, we have this fear and love the emotion, like fear, if you don't get this and you're gonna be like big or whatever, right? Because, yeah. but if, but I'm thinking if we can do that, why can't we just focus on the love part? So it's like, you know, can we do it that way that's more inspirational, it's more positive rather than fear, because fear is more, you said that the force, right? It's more forceful. But yeah. it comes to love, it's more power. So, yeah. I think yeah. some people, though, fear is more compelling to them, you know, to avoid it. Yeah. Than love is to attract them. Mm -hmm. And then you've got the other side that they don't want to even deal with the fear side. They don't want to even think about it. Mm -hmm. They're attracted to the love side. So you've got... I think two different types of potential clients mm -hmm. and they will respond to one or the other more right. than the one they're not. But would, would you think, I have a question, would you think that the people, the clients, the professor clients, right, if they have more inclined to the fear factor, do you think it's harder for them, for harder, like for example, as consultants, is it harder to help them in terms of clients is it harder to work with them with those people who are more in the fear factor it is it is yeah I'm I mean, part of my work is book coaching which which always at some point turns into life coaching okay mm -hmm. and when a person is driven by fear it's much harder for them to get the momentum to actually get their message out onto uh, onto a oh. medium you know whether it's a screen or whatever because they're always engaging with their block of what's wrong and, yeah. and they're if they're driven through love then they just the love starts to grow and the next thing they know they've got an irresistible force taking place that's just pushing them to put the words on the paper and they're not they're not arguing with themselves so people who are experiencing fear while they're writing um you know sometimes uh, i've been able to help people clear that out and a lot of times it goes real deep into what's been going on in their life before that. 
and in some cases people have actually made a complete change in their life based on the insights that they got right. just about their writing so it's really interesting how those two forces contradict one another it's much harder to work with a person who's in fear yeah what i gather from what you said betty is like if it's love it's more creative yeah if it's love based more because they're more as you said they're more open so yeah. more creative more empowering mm -hmm. but if it's fear it's more shut down it's more there's kind of like slower progress because there's friction there's resistance yeah yeah and and then the, the, what that means is then you have to overcome the fear in order to get to the actual creative force of love yeah. and so you know eventually you can but it's a whole extra step but i think with small businesses especially if they're relatively new mm -hmm. there's a lot of fear they've got to overcome before they can get to where yeah. you want them to be and if you can solve that fear factor then immediately you know it can be it can be turned into something positive right. but in many cases especially with with small businesses who are relatively new they're looking at how how many of them fail and how many of them fail quickly and even how few of them are even around after even 10 years that there's a lot of potential fear that you know you can run into and but uh, as soon as you are able to get them to understand that you have the solution then that maybe that fear can dissipate fairly quickly yeah yeah, and that's an internal emotional decision that you can have support people in, in deciding not to be afraid. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's because, you know, when, when you say fear factor and how we overcome that, I guess the thought process is like, I don't know, it's just like the only thing that's constant in the world, right, is change. That's There's right. There's change to the end, you know, and if we become um, stagnant, right, then there's no growth. So if you know what you're saying about you know new businesses and they go five years and ten years and sometimes they have this fear, but if we put it together, like yes, there are patterns that we can look at, and there's always constant adjustment that we need to do to keep on moving forward. Yes. Yeah. I'm hoping that you know their mindset is like you know to remove that fear because it's always about growth, it's always about change, mm -hmm. and in change there's also loss. So if they can't, you know, take care of the loss because of the change, right? If we change, we lose something. If I buy a new car, then I'm going to lose my old car, which I have, I'm passionate about, kind of like that. So in anything yeah. that we do, there's always, there's change and loss. So maybe, I ran into that just yesterday when I upgraded from Windows 10 to Windows 11. <laughs> oh my gosh. I had that experience. <laughs> Did you? Oh, that's too much. That's so different. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. So, uh, <laughs> so going, going back to the launch of Windows 95 back in the last millennium, yeah. they got the Rolling Stones um, uh, song, Start Me Up. Yeah. One of the lines that says it's enough to make a grown man cry. That's uh, right. That was perfect for that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was, I was still having problems with it this morning, but it's just that it's not really a problem. It's just that. Hey, wait a minute. This isn't here where it used to be. Yeah. It's <laughs> like that was that version where they took the start button off. That that's the, that's one thing. Yeah. I was trying to figure out how do I restart this thing? How do you do anything? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it, but I'm sure it'll become second nature after a while. So yeah, like the yeah. first time I ever put an iPhone in my hand, right? When they had the button. I yeah. got into so I was like, well, how do I get back? How do I get out of here? Oh, you push the button. Oh, wow. I know. Really? My wife still has trouble with that. <laughs> it's not, I guess it's not logical thinking. I don't know. No, it's like on a Mac. It says, well, how do you eject the CD? You drag the little icon and put it in the trash. Well, to me, that means delete everything on the, on the DVD. Yeah, or CD, I, I right? but that's that. the There's weirdest idea there. anybody ever come up with. <laughs> Well, speaking of Max, when I upgraded to one of the systems, I think maybe I was upgrading to Santa Catalina or Catalina or something a while back. And all of a sudden, when I went to find her, the menu was completely different. I was like, how am I going to find anything? Right. And then I had to go to the bar at the top to finally discover that, oh, now there's a drop down instead of a list yeah. on the icon. And I was like, you know, like nobody warns you. That's the thing, you know. No, there's no warning at all. 
Go uh, for the upgrade and hope you can figure it out. Like um, I held off for so long because I was afraid my apps wouldn't even work. So yeah, I was really happy when they all worked. But then these other things came out. Yeah, like um, you were asking about when I went to visit Rocket Norton, one of the problems he has is he's got a relatively new MacBook Pro and somebody mm -hmm. set it up for him and somehow the launch pad icon is not there. Like, I, I don't, like, that's really weird, you know, how you had to, I had to use the search to find an app yeah. instead of the launch pad. Like, I don't even know how the guy managed to do it. I, I thought that would have been impossible to get rid of that icon, but they did. Oh, that's crazy. I'm glad I still have one because <laughs> yes. I still have my old Mac. It's 2012, actually. Oh, yeah. In my, it's my like, MacBook, yeah. <laughs> It's like deleting the finder so you can't search for files. Like what? <laughs> yeah, well, that's that's what I mean. When I, you know, and then I discovered, oh, along the top bar of the computer, it, when you when you click on the the desktop, oh, you click on go, and then it tells you everything that was in the finder menu before. And you're like, yeah. oh, thanks, guys. <laughs> Thank you for two hours of massive anxiety. I, I was like, how am I going to live if I can't find recents? You know? <laughs> it only took me about 12 years, but I figured out if I put the icon um, menu on the right-hand side instead of at the bottom, I have a lot more real estate to work with. <laughs> it only took me like 12 years to figure that out. No, okay. But you got it. But you got it. <laughs> yeah. Give Rabbit the time. Sooner or later, he'll get the answer. Yeah. Yes, yes. Back to the Pooh Bear references. <laughs> right. Yeah, well, I, I I, think we have very much an alignment in our vision of what we can, uh, what we can say we do with the people we work with. And one of the things that I really enjoyed about the conversation you and I had earlier, Maria, was when you were talking about narrowing down the market and really standing out in your market. And I was like, oh, you need to get to know Roy. <laughs> Because that's what Roy does. That's exactly what I do. Yeah. So um, yeah, I'm really yeah. happy we're all in the same room together. Fantastic. Yeah. Because it's like, you know, I was just like thinking years ago, it's like, why do we have to compete with everyone? It's like, why do I have to compete? Like, even for me, I don't want to compete with that person because I am me. I'm unique. That's exactly right. So, and then they said, okay, so if, like, for example, one uh, client would say, so I, I can't market this because everybody has the same thing. I said, no, it's not. So how many millions of products do we have out there? How many shoes do you have? But each one have their own person, each one persona, and each one have their own, you know, market space, right? Yeah. So it's like basically just knowing, and I this is what I say, it's your unique platform That's that you can exactly. own and yeah. you can claim. Just find that, right? Yeah, each one of us is unique. But the interesting thing is, when you collaborate, you even become more unique. Yeah. And and so if there even was anybody that could be considered a competitor, they're gone. They're gone. Because you're eliminating the, the barrier. No, you can't come in because we have all of this expertise already. Yeah, that's right. Right? Yeah. And then we actually overcome, let's say, startup costs. If you collaborate, you don't really have the startup cost anymore because it's like you're already set and you have your, you know, and then you have your branding and you have your people. So how can they come in when you're already, you know, not stable, but you have a good solid foundation, hopefully stable, but you know, it's good foundation. So, yeah. And anywhere you work and then this is how I describe things. And I'm, I'm very visual too. And I use my hands a lot, as you can tell, it's like a brand, you know, if you get to know the brand, it's basically looking like a box. Okay. So if you're going to have a product and service and turning it to a brand or even just a business, because a brand is actually a part of your business. So that's my thinking too, it's the operational side of the branding. But anyways, it's like a box. It's like, you know it side to side, inside, outside, top and bottom. So regardless of what your competition would say, you got it because you know who you are. So that's the thing. Yeah, yeah. that's that's one of the things that Roy and Betty and I do when we do a review of somebody's online presence is we check to see what they look like, you know, because because uh, people often don't look at themselves, right? <laughs> yeah, you know, no, we often them. don't. Yeah. yeah, we see them in a in a network meeting, and they say they're, uh, you know, um, I don't know, selling some kind of widget or do offering some service, and then you know, um, you know, 
they used to manufacture bowling shoes and that's what their online presence says you know so they're 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 behind they're out of sync with themselves so we try to look at you know betty's question is you know where are you now and where do you want to go and then mm -hmm. then we look at all get everything consistent as you were saying all, all of the the messaging and the branding everywhere yeah. is starting to to give the same picture the same box you're describing the same box yeah, the same box and at the same time the structure of the box so it's not just a market and this is my my thought process that's why i'm creating this too it's because it's not just a marketing communication because we can do a whole lot of our marketing but if we don't deliver then that's going to break us too so then if we build that up then the box should be secure so i mean the operational side of it the financial side of it everything else the customer service after sales it all has to be as you said, Greg, consistent in alignment with everything. So and that's Betty's strong suit is the consistency. Consistency in the messaging, especially. Mm -hmm. yeah. So Maria, how do people work with you? Like, what kind of, like, what it, what does your service look like, and and how do people work with you? So um, usually. They do is we do have a problem let's say in terms of starting up a business right um whether it be business uh, operations um uh, start up in its say business plan or even just the marketing side of it they can come to me and then i could put together let's say a work with them to put together a program um a campaign or the plan in itself and then i can work with them it depends if they want it you know, long term i can also do training for their team which i have done for sales team or marketing team, or sometimes they would come to me and say, hey, we want to review the brand. There's, It's funny, right? Because when clients would say, okay, my brand is not selling. And I said, okay, but okay, where is it at? It's like Betty would ask, where is it at, right? But it's not just the communication piece of it. It may be the sales side of it. So the communication would be great, but the you know, delivery of salespeople is not. So then I will go in to train those people on how to deliver the message consistent to what the brand is. So then that's how I, you know, work if like referral also. And, um, you know, and um, I will just go through. And here's the thing. I don't accept a lot of clients because I ask with you, uh, you know, you select people who would align with you. So my question when I, you know, deal with them and when we first have a discovery call is what is your vision for this? What is your mission? How do you want it to be? And then from there, we can analyze, is it like the whole business plan or is it just the operational, the sales or the marketing? It's more of the system. Mine is more system thinking. So they can also go to my website, mm -hmm. mariadivar.com and we can yeah. communicate there. And thank you for allowing me to do that too, to put my, my website on there. There we go, yeah. So you were, you were mentioning getting all those little pieces together, like, uh, Dan Kennedy one time told a story about a very large organization had more money than cents, really. They spent probably $10 million on a publicity marketing campaign, yeah. sending people to the organization, but there was nobody there knew why people were coming or what to say on the phone or anything. Like none of the back end stuff was ready, right? So they were just- happened to one of the, you know, I was working before with a, another group and that's what happened. There's a huge campaign an event actually it's an event we put it all together and i at first i said no this is not the way to go we're just going to waste money here you know save your money i was telling the client but you know one of the uh the team members here encouraged that uh the client to go with it right so they did right it's they spent how, how many thousands of dollars and nobody came yeah. so i was frustrated well, what, what, what do we do so, so i said yeah, yeah. That's the thing, you know yeah so, yeah we, we talk about it as, are you ready to receive business? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Are you ready to receive? <laughs> so. it, what came into my mind is an aviation metaphor, okay? Don't take off until you know where you're going to land. Yeah, right? that's a good right. idea, right. yes. <laughs> yeah, when you're when you're flying over the jungle, it's too late to think about it. <laughs> yes, yes. Now, that's why happy landings is what you say to people when they're taking off, you know? Yeah, yeah like, right. Yeah, Betty, we talked about strategy, right, yesterday. And yeah. even you, there's a also a quote from your son. But basically, it's like, you know, you ha before you even have strategy, you have to have an understanding of the entire landscape as to where you're going to be in. Right. So how can you plan? Because it's so, some people are so used to here, here's the plan. Do an ad, 
do like this. It's like, okay, that's not strategy. That's just kind of like, in some sense, it's just tactical because there's no purpose to it, right? Yeah. If you want to spend money, great. But I'm not here to just spend your money. I'm here to help you make it work. So right. then you have to have an understanding before you develop a plan and then your tactic. So. What's the objective? That was the question. Yeah. <laughs> it was What's objective. the objective? Yeah. 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 Well, because when you really nail that down, that's why I always ask people, what do you want this to do? Because when you really nail that, then everything else about the strategy starts to line up in a perfectly natural way. And then from there, you can drill down into the tactics and everything. And what's the outcome? So the objective and in terms of the outcome, yes, you have the objective. But what do you want people to feel and do once they're in it? Right. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's part of what I define as the objective. Like, how do you want people to feel? That's really what it's all about. When in supporting a business, what does that business owner actually want from their business? Do they want more? Do they want more money? Do they want more time? Do they want more freedom? Or, you know, or some? What's the combination that's going to really ring the bell for them? Yeah. And that's going to determine a lot of how they go about doing it. It's funny because the question is, okay, what's so what does that mean? It's like, for example, oh, I want I want more money. So I said, okay, so what does that mean for you to have more money? Well, yeah. if I have more money, then I would do it. Okay, so the, what does that mean for you if you have that? Because sometimes we just look at it like, you know, in just a superficial way. But if you really dive deeper, then you understand, okay, oh, so that's why I want this. So then that's the core that we can work with. Exactly. Yeah. Very yes. good, Marie. And sometimes, yes. if you, you know, the end objective is to have time and space and peace and not worry about stuff, then mm -hmm. maybe starting a business isn't the thing to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, but a lot of times people go, "Oh, I just can't stand this corporate environment anymore. I've got to start my own business so I can be my own boss." Right. They don't realize what that's all going to be about. You end up right. with a jerk for a boss sometimes. <laughs> right. I was going to say a tyrant, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I had the other words. I was trying to find something. <laughs> yeah. Something positive. Yes. yes. Very encouraging person. Yeah. Challenging one. <laughs> right. Challenging one. Yeah. Yeah. That's how it is. Yeah. So we, we move forward. It's like, yeah. I have some notes here too. Um, I was going to share. But anyway. Well, Maria, I like the way you look at a book like that, get ideas there, and then figure out how to apply those ideas to a business. Yeah. I think that's a really good approach. It gives you ideas that other people aren't using. And you probably know that. It's yeah. probably why you do it. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Because I, I enjoy it because, as I said, you know, businesses are built for people, right? Yeah service of people. But if I don't understand people and how to work, then how can I develop a business that will work for them? And then to establish a business, make it stronger, then people has to work for it, you know, work with it or in it. So how does that work? So my curiosity about it, that's why it kind of like moves me into different directions. And people would say, Maria, you're all over the place. Why you're all you're reading this, reading that, or you're all over the place. I said, well, don't you think that would make me a better person to help you? It's all related to people. <laughs> it's all related. Yeah. Taxes, yeah. insurance, you know, um, you know, marketing, um, operations, uh, sales after service, all of that's all related to people. You know? So right. I don't know. That's why I wanted to uh just share this with you guys because it's more of it's philosophy and also psychology combined. Okay. So speaking of a book, is your book launched yet or is it coming up? Not yet. It's still it's still in the process, it's still in the work. Actually, I should always see, you know, hinting on Betty, Betty, maybe we can do something, you know, together because of how she's passionate about, you know, service as well and the communication side of it. But I don't know. I said, here's the thing. Isn't it the fun thing? Like even he here in this group, I'm so excited. Betty, how many times have I said that? I'm excited, right? I'm so excited about the possibilities of doing something with you, right? With all of you. And then as Roy was saying, something better from this because yeah. of your expertise because each one and i say this even my my classes is like each one is a genius in themselves but combine all of that holy moly what can we do yeah and that it's been a huge growth experience working with these guys maria it's it's been fabulous and i, I also want to add that when i looked at your website i said 
I don't think I've seen anybody else who does strategic pl business planning who brings in the elements of uh, spirituality and psychic, uh, <laughs> psychic. I um, love that. Harmony. Yeah. You know, on on their on their page. I mean, they may speak about it indirectly, but you just came right out and said, "These this is what's important to me," and that's uh, that's a brilliant approach. Well, thank you. Yeah, and just in terms of your messaging, it's, I feel that's unique. I haven't seen anybody else do that. I mean, I, I mean, I've yeah, I definitely have seen business coaches who are sometimes classed as woo woo and so on, you know, like law of attraction things and everything, none of which is wrong or anything, but the, the fact that you have hard skills and then you go ahead and say, and this is what matters to me makes you unique. That's what makes your brand stand out in my opinion. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you so much for the feedback. I, I appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so every, everyone should go visit your website. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, and, and how do you prefer it? There it is. That's how you spell it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's, I, I, I can misspell anybody's name, but I was trying to be careful with this. <laughs> you got it right. Yeah. yeah. And um, yeah. You're, you're also available on LinkedIn and elsewhere. Yeah. Do you have anything on YouTube or any other place? Or? No, not yet. Not, not yet. Not yet. Okay. Yeah, I'm trying to like kind of like scale it in such a way that I can maintain the quality of the service that I provide. Yeah. Um, yeah, not yet, but maybe in the works later on. Maybe in the works. Maybe, you know, maybe Greg, you know, maybe you can help me out with those things. Yeah. <laughs> Roy and I are big, big YouTube video guys. So, yeah. What, what so we found out is that if you're omnipresent with your message, that's where it really works the best you because you don't really know where somebody's going to find you and you don't want that to be the only place mm -hmm. because yeah. if they find you on youtube then you're going to bring them to your website in fact you'll most of the time bring them to your website but mm -hmm. if your books are going to be on amazon or something they're going to go there too mm -hmm. but if you can get your message going around you see you, you they come into linkedin and, and you send them somewhere else then from that place, you send them somewhere else. Now, when you include about four things, it really gets effective. So it's it's really good with, I always think that you need a Google business profile also. A lot of people don't think that's a value. I, I strongly disagree with that. But however you feel about that, the website and, and LinkedIn are, are very well associated. You add YouTube to that mix and whoa, now you're really... You're really yeah. cooking. Now you're and, cooking. <laughs> and what I've done, what I've done lately, I've just started doing this, and and it kind of combines all this, um, and, and it takes some planning to make this happen. But right. so I, I just put one um, video on YouTube. I'm going to then put another one on there. <laughs> then I'm writing a, a LinkedIn uh, newsletter, which is then going to reference both yes. of those videos and my website mm -hmm. and each website well one website what i'm sorry one youtube video will reference the other youtube video mm -hmm. yeah. so and i'm going to do that on a regular basis because i think that's well i'm going to try it i think it's going to be very effective yeah, no, yeah. absolutely and uh we we have a philosophy as repurposing <laughs> everywhere yes. 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 for example your book well when you get your book you know, like you probably pull out excerpts of that for articles, blog posts. Right. Uh, could be a YouTube, a little short YouTube blog. All that stuff works together, right? You know what? I put together a webinar. Um, it's just like, you know, uh, it, it, it's a draft right now. I'd like to share that with you. I'll just send it off to you. for you. Okay. That'd be great. We'd love that. Yeah. yeah. It's about the uh, message for my, uh, the, the strategy. The, the method that I'm putting together. So you have no idea what it's about. Yeah. Yeah. So and okay. then there'll be an audio book, <laughs> an <laughs> online course, yeah, you know, documentary. <laughs> even just the one part of it is just, a, it's full of, it's funny because even the, co the it's C-O-R-E, right? Which is the um, the core, but the Cognize, I'm actually starting off with, a, with the discussion about thinking. How do people think? And it's like, what, Maria? How do you? It's like you're talking about that. Well, yeah, because people don't know what listening is and what thinking is. 
You know, there are right. multiple ways of listening. Yeah. There's, but the best one is active listening, right? But there's also thinking, so critical thinking, and how does that work? How does it? So in that case, it's like I I want this. My objective is to create or to help people have a higher level of thinking, so that they can process things to make it better. And with the heart combined to that, so it's more service, it's more concrete, it's more stable, it's solid, you know. Okay. Could you repeat what core means again? The acronym. The core is C is for cognize. It's, then we're going to talk about more cognition and how thinking process things like that. The O is optimize. So we're going to talk about um, resources and assets and how to maximize that. I'm going to put in there a little bit about Six Sigma because I do have, uh, I went through Six Sigma Black Belt. And then uh, relate is about relationships, engagement and relationships with people. And how do you uh, put together, it's more of the operational side as well, because how do you put strategy and make it you know um, implementable within the the business the system and then elevate is a discussion about um introspection and transformation and also a little bit of spirituality in there so you're elevating yourself and then you go back to the sea so it's like more of like a circular way but you're constantly evolving yeah i don't know if if you're aware of this but google's most important, in my opinion, latest uh, application to their why I rank people where thing is called Core Web Vitals. Mm -hmm. And so uh, and what it does is it really breaks down what we're talking about into a thing that can be measured by an algorithm and by a bunch of, you know, Google bots, essentially, so that if your website explains your values like you're talking about and you're trying to build relationships with your clients this this mathematical algorithm will will actually determine that to a large extent and google will be able to tell how they want to rank you and if that is strong in fact if you don't do it <laughs> you're probably going to be out of luck but if that is if you're strong in in that and they can measure it then you're going to go, in my opinion, right to the top. So that's the way to utilize what Google cares about. Another person that you need a relationship with are these big brands like Google and LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for that. I'm jotting down notes in my head. Uh, <laughs> I'm yeah. doing the same with you. <laughs> yeah, there, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and you can watch, rewatch this and uh, we can probably create a transcript to send to you too <laughs> so. yeah. yeah there's good stuff in this this is excellent mm -hmm. yeah. i'm so glad you're here yeah thanks, well, thanks for well, dropping I, in I, I would like to say something about what you said earlier which was the, the phrase insurmountable strategy i love that insurmountable yeah, strategy. Like <laughs> a piece of brilliance just saying you know really okay i'm gonna have to put that on the screen yeah <laughs> Let's do it. Strategy. Yeah. yeah. See yeah. if I can type it without. <laughs> uh oh. It's not inferring the possibility of defeat in, at all. It's insurmountable. <laughs> insurmountable strategy was it? That is strong. Uh huh. I always listen for the words because they indicate so much about the process that's led to that being verbalized. That's why I call myself a grammar nerd, because I'll actually dissect a sentence to go, OK, how did they put that thought together? <laughs> it's so fantastic you said grammar nerd, because I always say that about words, too. Words are so important. Yes. People say, are you, I said, OK, we have to uh, be aggressive. I said, no, not aggressive, assertive, probably, but there not aggressive. And then they would have so all those words, right? That they would say, no, 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 no. So when you're describing a personality of a brand or maybe your corporate persona, mm -hmm. you adjectives and you know words because words matter because it has to. How do you say that? Communicate as you know, Betty. Communicate who you are, the yeah. true sense of who you are. Right. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Our rhetoric teacher used to tell us every day: truth lies in fine distinctions. Yes. Yeah. That's where it really is. That's powerful. I don't yeah, know if I spelled that correctly. I think I saw on your website, Transmorgrify. 
Transmog without an R, M O G R I F Y. Transmog from Calvin and Hobbes, right? Yeah, Calvin and Hobbes. That's where I know that from. Yeah, yeah. Calvin and Hobbes. But they, I think they, they, um, they twisted it in some way. I can't remember how. Yeah, they transmogrifier. They put the box at the transmogrifier to create something from nothing, right? So, right. <laughs> yeah. So they create something like, okay, now I'm a, a dinosaur, so to speak. But it's just so amazing. Yeah. Transmogrify. Yeah. And the other word that I love is Unoya. So core news, the core news, the news and the word in itself is about mind. It's about thinking, it's better thinking, N-O-U-S. Okay. And there's a, actually, I'm going to send you that information. It's in, oh, in the so what's, right. that, what's that word again? Can you spell it for me? N-O-U-S. There are a few words and I bet you would appreciate this. <laughs> N-O-U-S is also about, um, uh, it's a Greek word, actually, and it's about uh, being um, an elevated, uh, yeah, practical intelligence. N O U S, so it's British, and it says common sense and practical intelligence. News. So core news, which is core with its encompassing okay, that, yeah. the news of practical intelligence. Because of what I like is to apply common sense principles to master yes. business acumen. But it's common sense because we all have it. But we, it's not developed. That's why common sense is not common. And common sense is actually, it's not common in the long run with everyone from the very start of humanity. Common sense actually changes because of what we learn day to day, mm -hmm. your experiences. So it's fascinating. And then the other word that I like is eunoia. E A U, wait, eunoia. E N O, wait, hold on. I'm going to check it. Eunoia. You know, it's actually also, it's a word, it's a Greek word. Yeah. Okay. You know, it's E U N O I A. E U N O I A. It's yeah. also about beautiful thinking. Right. It's beautiful like thinking. This? Yes. So it's a word that has all the vowels in it. One of the two words, I know there's two words that have all the vowels in it, but this one is about beautiful thinking. It's like thinking. So I like Unoya because it's beautiful thinking. News is about practical intelligence. And then Transmogrify is about creating something magically, transforming it into something. So those are my favorite words. <laughs> okay, good. I had one friend in high school called another friend obliterant. Oh. A combination of uh, belligerent and oblivious. It was perfect. <laughs> I submitted it to the snakelet uh, <laughs> dictionary. I'm using that one. That's that word. <laughs> Yeah. And he used it perfectly. <laughs> it was very consistent. He used it, said it about three times, and he just, it had perfect grammar. But, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, you know, he he was on probably 10 beers in at the time, but there we go. <laughs> <laughs> but that might help sometimes. Sometimes yeah. it does. Yeah. Well, I had, I had somebody wrote me, and uh, somebody I went to high school with, it says, it's taken me 40 years to understand what I was saying <laughs> about Ringo Starr's drumming. I don't even remember having the conversation about it, but uh, anyway, but it was something, it was probably some kind of brilliant insight that came after too many beer. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you don't remember. <laughs> yeah, the reason, yeah. So the reason he sent it to this is he found Ringo Starr an interview with Ringo Starr explaining why his drumming style was different than anybody else's. And and basically he's a left-handed person playing a right-handed kit. So he just did things differently. Is I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. interesting. Yeah. So he said he would lead with his left hand where a normal person would lead with his right. Yeah. And, and that meant the timing was different. Mm -hmm. He was just a unique drummer. Every, every drummer is unique anyway, but he was. Yeah particularly unique. If you ever try to imitate how he played, you realize how he, how unique he was. <laughs> so. It's going to be hard. <laughs> that starts with music and ends with music, doesn't it, you guys? <laughs> yeah. so, we, so, so the three of us all have some music connections. Right. So that, yeah. We what didn't know that, that for the long, longest time. What do you mean music connections? Are you well, I, I played in bands all my life. Uh, um, Roy play guitar and he did quite a lot of recording in Chicago at uh famous studio there and 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 uh Betty I think has had music involved with her life most of the yeah time. yeah I, I, I you know why yeah to play no. classical piano for 14 years 
Holy smokes. All right. right. Yeah. yeah, I started piano at five. I didn't play 14 years, though. So, uh, yeah, I, I did it since I was young until, you know, 14 years I was playing. So they wanted me to go to a uh, music school. Awesome. But I said, no, I'm going to be in marketing. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, that was a smart move. <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm in the club. Can I join the club then? Yeah, you can join the club. There was a, I can't remember no. the, the yeah. artist who was talking about an analogy between business and musicians, right? And they basically, one of the mm -hmm. ones was like the um, a viola player mm -hmm. is generally the sort of the glue that holds things together, but they're not too flashy, right? Whereas the trumpet player is always in your face. <laughs> and, yeah. and it, was actually, it was actually quite quite a fun book, you know, sort of analogy between what instruments people play to how, they're, how it works to business. And uh, I think um, many successful businessmen, people are probably involved with music in some way. Like it's just, it helps uh, you be more creative. Creative and logic side of things. Yeah. You look at the notes or something, you process it, and then you create something out of it. So yeah. yeah. So what do you guys play though? So Greg, your guitar, bass, drums. Well, my drum, my instrument was the drums. Oh. And then I can fake playing bass kind of musically. I know what a real bass player can do, and I—that's not me. But mm -hmm. I can, I can, I can stand up and do something reasonable. And then I, I play guitar. Uh, it's my it's kind of my favorite instrument for my own songs. And Roy, and I take a piano lessons, but they I still suck. <laughs> I took guitar lessons, but I couldn't grip the the neck, so that's yep. why I stuck with stuck with yeah, piano. When, when your hands are small, it's harder. I I have trouble with my hands playing the piano, but I don't have trouble playing the guitar. So you have the opposite problem, right? You're used to playing that way, and mm -hmm. then you pick up something else. It just feels unnatural. Yeah, and, and that's what we see. That's why I'm, my hand movement is because I'm so used to doing this. <laughs> yeah. I'm always like. <laughs> but that would be an interesting style on guitar, too, if you ever really got into it. Because uh, once again, you'd come at it from a different direction. Yeah. I, I yeah. studied a little bit of classical guitar, which is good for my right hand because I could uh, pluck. I could do the plucking. Yeah, that's really good. But yeah. I could do it, but the thing when you grip it, when you have that thing, I, I can't grip the neck. So, so there so there are some you. guitarists who played, like do a tap thing, like they'll have the, the guitar laying down and they'll play it. And that style might fit you more <laughs> because it's more you. Yeah, it yeah. probably would. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen that. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen a, a video yeah, of streets with that. <laughs> they have guitars that that sit flat like that, and you and you and you play them like that. That mm -hmm. might be really right up your alley. Yeah, there's a thing called a Chapman stick, which is kind of a combination of a bass and a guitar put together, mm -hmm. and and you you play that by tapping, right? You necessarily like you 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 know, with both hands into some degree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What I like. That, that I've, I've done since my career was over was get into um, using all kinds of electronics to enhance the sound. And oh, it's so much fun. Uh, basically use synthesizers. In fact, I use a couple of them at the same time, which makes really interesting sounds. I, ha I have what comes out of the guitar going to two different synthesizers and two different amplifiers. And it's uh, I, I, I think, well, what I like to call my sound is, is color now. Yeah. My sound is a color or multicolors. Mm -hmm. Well, it's like Dark Side of the Moon, right? That's all texture and colors and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot. Back before Marie's day. <laughs> Yeah, we're, back in my time, we didn't have all these <laughs> electronic. We did have fuzz tones and stuff like yeah. that, but well, that was about well, it. Like Aaron Sheeran, who's been top of the box for a long time, right? And you know, um, one time he just made a comment. Says, "I don't, I don't, I just tour with me. <laughs> yeah, I don't have a band. What? Oh yeah, well, some people can do that. Well, because he sits there, he's band. got those loopers and stuff. Like he sits there and he just creates a whole texture." everything live himself it's just yeah. really incredible he saves a lot of money by not having a band and a lot of 
mm. marital and, and relationship problems. <laughs> well, what I like about having a band, you, 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 can, you can have all your instruments creating an orchestra effect, but also if you get instrumentalists that can sing, you can also have the, the choir effect on top of it. So yeah. we did a lot of three-part yeah. harmony and in some cases, four-part no, harmony. Yeah, now you get a, you know, a, bit, a really, you know, big, like, um, oh, well, the Doobie Brothers are a big band or something with 10 people on stage, all singing, doing amazing things, right? Yeah, that, to me is, that, that really rocks it. I know. Do we have that currently? <laughs> the old, you know, the, the bands before, they're just amazing. Do so we we're all getting together at Betty's place <laughs> next spring. <laughs> yeah. Your piano. Next year. <laughs> um, yeah, we'll, we'll get up there, have a big jam session and see what happens. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, now me, I like wind instruments, including the voice. You know, uh, I learned to I learned to sing and sang in a church choir for a while I was a soloist started, for yeah. seven years or something and flute saxophone oh. I, had a, I had an uncle who used to teach me um he played with one of the big bands in New York my, my great uncle actually and I used to get to learn rhythms on his tap pad and I'd always go so Uncle Kiki when do I get to use the drums I never got to use the trap set ever oh, and yeah. it took me a long time to understand why but, <laughs> so, oh, but I love all things music so. Going back to those wind instruments, I, I really like the Marshall Tucker band, but a mm -hmm. lot of their sound is because they use flute and baritone sax and all those things yeah. that really gives yeah, them a, those are... a lot of, a lot of texture to their sound. They're oh, not yeah. the guitar band, right? So. There's nothing quite like blasting it out on a big giant horn, I'll tell you. Yeah. <laughs> the E Street band, Bruce Springsteen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Fun. Yeah. Well, there we go. Well, so we're 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 all arranged. We're going to have a big gig, big concert down at Betty's place. <laughs> all right. Year. Now we got the stage. Everything. We're ready. Yeah. <laughs> That's That's cool. We used to have music festivals on the property. It's been quite a while. So, it, well, this will be a different scale and a whole different crowd. So. <laughs> so Maria, yeah. where are you located? I'm in Camarillo, uh, California. Okay. So. Well, I got to hold down the east side here. I'm the uh, all you guys are on the west coast, so <laughs> right. I'm the only one on the east coast. Well, where at in the east coast? North Carolina. Oh, North Carolina. You never know. We might be moving out too. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. Yeah. You never know. Yeah. yeah. It, the, the world is a small split a, a place, isn't it? It's just yeah. yeah. It it is. Yeah. It's, it, it's, it's kind of funny. I've got. For whatever reason, I got connected with Roy, and I know about five other people within 50 miles of him. Yeah, even closer. Yeah, yeah it's just, like it's just weird. Two completely different connections. So I almost should have honorary North Carolina license plates or something, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm going to have well, to go visit because it's one of the few states I haven't been to yet. I, I, so I, I, I've seen the border. I was in South Carolina close enough, and we almost went to... Nashville, so we're really, you know, Tennessee, we're really close, but just haven't yeah. st put my toe over the border yet. Well, my part of North Carolina is like the Silicon Valley of the East Coast. Oh wow! Yeah, so a lot, lot of, lot of IT people around here. Also very strong for medicine, but I yeah. look at it from, from the internet standpoint. Ideas, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, wonderful to meet you, Maria. Yeah. I am got to move along. Yeah, this has been fun. We'll play our little outgoing movie <laughs> video. Thank you so fun. much for having me. Yeah, thank you very much. So, thank yeah, you, yeah, thank you for coming, even though you didn't know what you're <laughs> to expect. Uh, it worked out well. <laughs> yeah. so, so so sometimes amazing, isn't it? Yeah, it is amazing. Yeah. 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 We've had people that didn't know they were going to be a guest until two minutes before the show and it's worked out well yeah 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 it's all for fun it's all yeah. for fun yeah so happy friday everyone happy friday thank happy you friday. thank you <laughs>